getting old. It's just one of them days. All right. So I came here a second early because, well, I can. <laughs> uh, let's see. What is going on with my thingamabobber? I don't know. Hello, everybody. I'm Tiffany. Welcome to my quilting life. It's Sunday. So Sunday. Where I will sew. On a Sunday? On a Sunday. <laughs> because it's Sunday. Because I'm going to have fun this Sunday, right now, today. <laughs> um, there's lots of people here. Look at that. We got Cynthia, Kim, Tracy, Kara, Paula, Connie, Lois, uh, Betty, Vicky, and I lost my chat. Where did it go? It disappeared on me. Oh, there it is. I found it again. I know I have some over here. Robin, uh, Carolina, Debbie, Lois, Lori, Shirley, Jeanette, Donna, Suzanne, Martha, Wild Yard 46. That sounds like an old, like, name that you would use, like, on uh, YouTube. Remember, or not YouTube, uh, Yahoo. Remember when you used to be able to go on chats on Yahoo or, like, AOL? Yeah. <laughs> and you get little, like, names. <laughs> Uh, let's see, Kathy, Janine, Dawn, Sally, Tara, and so many more. Welcome, everybody. So, I have, I have a lot of scraps, and I have this thing. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I do not. So, I've been, like, promising myself that I will, but I never always get to it. Scraps. Every project, you always have scraps. What do you do with those scraps? Lately, I've been taking my open gate boxes, the empty boxes, and I've been using them to put the leftover scraps inside. And then I pile them up over there, and I'm like, and then I come in here on a Sunday, and I say, what can I do today? And then I think about it, and then all these boxes just pile up more and more because I never open them. I start something new. Really. So today, I have opened a box, and it's last week's project, the leftovers from it, and I'm going to sew them into something. I don't know what I'm sewing them into, but I got some, you know, a whole little stack of some one and a half by, who knows, four and a half probably. Um, I have some leftover background and, and the whatever color pieces that I use, the sashing, that's what the word was. Then I have a whole mess of the leftover squares because that last week's project only used like 20 something of them. So I have, you know, 10 or so of those left and some big this and some border fabric and some background, which is like that much that I didn't use. And some of the other the sashing or path, I guess would be whatever from the garden path quilt or garden tiles that's what it was the path fabric so you know i have all this left over and i want to make something i don't know what i'm gonna make but, it's gonna but be it, something. it'll be something <laughs> and yeah i don't very much have a lot of this that's all that's left of that besides the five inch border but i'm gonna probably work this in as if it was a block probably and yeah, so I sit here and I'm like, hmm, what can I make? I don't know. Why don't I just start cutting it up and find out? <laughs> so let's see what I can do with all this. I do have a bigger stack of these. So we're going to find out how big these are first. They look to be four and a half by one and a half. So I think I'm going to chop everything up into four and a half by one and a half inch pieces. This whole stack right here, because I can, you know, why not? Let's see what all that is. And I actually might turn this into four and a half. That way I have the, this color in there as well, you know, because I can. So that's what I'm going to do to start is make four and a half by one and a half inch pieces. Well, let's just cut right here first and then subcut. 
Hopefully everybody's having a wonderful day today. I managed to get a tiny little nap after my live with Ian earlier. So if you weren't there, you might want to go watch the replay after I'm done here. If you want to go find out what my continuum quilt ended up looking like. Because I am not taking it back out of the closet <laughs> to show everybody. Why didn't we leave it on the wall? I could have left it on the wall, but I wanted to use the wall for whatever I'm doing yeah, here. You could have taken it down after you saw it. Yeah, I could have. <clears throat> so I'm cutting some one and a half by four and a half inch pieces here from all this. I have no idea what I'm doing, but do I ever know what I'm doing? <clears throat> no. <laughs> all right, so there's a bunch of those. That can go with that stack. And then I'm going to take this pile right here and turn all these in. Actually, these ones can be bigger. How about that? How many of these are there? There's like however many. These ones will do two one and a half side by side equals two and a half inches of a square. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut these at two and a half inch by four and a half inch segments. That will be cool. And then, then I could figure out even more stuff to do with all this. Because how to figure it out. Okay, let's start with this stack right here. We're gonna do two and a half by four and a half. So I should get four per. This is gonna be something fun, hopefully. So one, two, Oops, don't move, ruler. Three, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be two and a half. And it is, minus some pinking. That is just getting all over me. All right, so there's some one, two and a half by four and a half. Let's cut some more of those. These are all the light colors, too, so I really can't do much of them because they're so light. Well, you love how soft that t-shirt is. I do love this t-shirt. It is nice and soft, and it's perfectly my size and super comfortable. All right, let's cut this one down. And it's proof that I went to North Carolina. <laughs> Let's make sure, even though there's pinking, and yeah, there's some pinking that needs to come off. Ta-da, that's off of there. I'm just going to... One more stack. One more stack. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it's silly. <clears throat> And stack it, chop it down to four and a half. If heaven calls for a color needed, it is four yards. Directions say cut two and a half by W O F with the fabric. So that means to cut the length of the four yards. If a pattern calls for what? The colors needed at four yards. Directions say cut 2.55 with the fabric. So that means to cut the length of four yards? No. Either that means the width. width of fabric is from selvage to selvage. So that's 40, sometimes 42 inches, sometimes 45 inches. Depends on the brand of fabric. Anywhere in between there. 
between 42 and 45. Typically, 43 and 44 is the number, though. Oh, yeah, there you go. Um, so I'm a little bit of that thinking again. It's not like it's got to be perfect or anything. All right. Now, what could I do with these guys? These are one and a half inches, aren't they? Yep. So I could take and make, make something. Hmm. Okay. Two of these together makes two and a half. So if I put two of those together. Okay, I think I have an idea. All right. So I'm going to cut this into some one and a half inch squares. We're going to keep this a solid one. Is this all selvage to selvage? And it is. Look at that. Because I will need borders or something, you know. I like borders on everything, even if it's going to be a little quilt. Save those out. What is this one? One. Oh, that's three inches. Let's slice that one in half and subcut it into, we'll subcut it into two and a half inch cuts. We're going to make something super awesome here. Stack it all up nicely. Okay, that's not nicely, because there's a seam right there, and right there. Keep it flat, and together. Here we go. Now it'll be nice. All right, we're going to turn this into a two and a half inch strip and cut two and a half inch squares from it. Why? Because you can. Do you have trouble with your rotary cutter? When you use it? No, I do not have any trouble with the screw on my rotary cutter. It's usually always pretty darn good and stays where it's supposed to stay. What is your favorite when not quilting? My favorite what when not quilting? My, do, my favorite thing to do when I'm not quilting is in the summertime, I swim. I'm a swimmer. I love to swim. All right, now I'm going to subcut this into two and a half inch squares because we're going to make something fun right now. And I hang out and watch movies with Scotty. We like watching movies together. That's our second thing. Every now and then we'll do a puzzle or, you know, random stuff. I don't really leave the house much, though, except to go swim. I'm a homebody kind of person. All right, I don't want that seam in my uh, block here, so I'm just gonna totally cut that seam out. What type of quilt was your very first quilt? My very first quilt was made with sheets, and it was just me throwing stuff together. Let me get a smaller ruler because now I'm just doing two and a half only anyway. Cut this seam out of here. Here's what we're going to do. I don't want that foldy fold right there. What I'm going to do is. What kind of oil do you use for your juki? I use juki oil. Juki something. 
oil for my machine. What is it called? Because I can't see it on the shelf. That right there. I buy those right there for my jukies, plural, because I have two of these TL2010 Qs, and then I have two of the, um, I don't have two. I have one uh, industrial, and I put that on the tabs for the walking foot. Not in the bottom, but even though it's the same thing. So, all right, here we go. I'm going to take two of these. It doesn't matter which two. I'm just going to take two of these and sew them together as long as they're different. And then two more. And then when I press these open, they'll be two and a half inches. And then I'm going to take two more. How do you know what the bias is? How do I know what the bias is? Because it's the, di the uh, diagonal of the fabric. And one more. Your oil bottle with the long thing that came with the machine, didn't it? No, we bought them separate. Oh, the ones that it? come with the machine are usually this, like this, with a really thick thing. Where but I, bu we bought these off of Amazon. I got a two pack for like what two ninety nine or something like that on really? Amazon. So I prefer these because of the long neck. I use these on my embroidery machine, on my long arm, on my other juki. This one has a big hole on it, so it's a little bit harder to just get that one drop into the holes on here. So I just prefer the big tall neck bottle but you could probably find them on any online website all right now can you put an iron up on the table for me for this do you have to oil your walking foot uh on the the industrial juki yes i oil the walking foot what kind of industrial do you have I have a Juki DU 1181N. It's a walking foot machine. Plug that in, please. Yeah, I'm getting Thank that. you. I'm okay, we're going to move those out of the way. Do these. I'm going to put the link First, in for the... Scotty put the link in for the, the probably Juki yep. or something. Yeah. All right. Where do you oil it? Where do I oil it? This machine, I oil. Four no, tabs. The oh, there's a uh, on the industrial machine. There's little red marks. One at the walking foot part, like a little red dot here on the back of the mechanism. One on top of it, and then I think two more to the side of it of the mechanism for it. All right, I'm gonna choose. So I made my one and a half inch by four and a half inch pieces into two and a half inch pieces. And now I'm going to take four of my two and a half by four and a half inch. Um, I'm going to take four different ones. And one more. Even though there's a lot of repeats. Oh, we'll do this one right there. I'm going to take four of those. I'm going to iron. Everything's already cut technically, so let's move all this stuff out of the way. Here, like that. Put those there. Oh, I can do something with those too. I'm going to iron right here. <clears throat> I want them nice and flat. What I'm going to do is on the corners of all four of my two and a half by four and a half. Okay, hold on. I got to put this here. Put that there. Put that there. Put that there. And then I want this one to be here. I got to look at my little design first real quick because or else I will... Uh, not know what I'm doing. 
I want this one. Right. Here. Do you need to oil the Juki 2010? Yes, I do oil my Juki 2010. It has four oil ports on top and two on the bed. This one right here, this has a wick. This one has a, a little tray on this back side. One has a wick, one has a tray. And then down here on the bottom, one has a tray and one has a wick on the inside, obviously. All right, so I want that that way. I'm finger pressing real quick so that I can know which way I'm sewing these on here. Have you ever made the dress for the nine block in Missouri Star? No, I don't know what that is. And this one will go this way. All right. I know the way I want to sew them now. I'm creating a pinwheel. Do you need to oil the walking foot for the Juki 2010? No, you don't need to oil the walking foot for this machine. Not that I'm aware. I've never oiled mine, ever. This one through. Sewing from corner to corner on the lovely line that I created of my little fold. <laughs> it looks like they all get sewn the same way. That's how I'm going to remember that for the next one. I had to make sure first by laying them on there. Do you suggest the Juki 2010 or the F600 for your first time Juki? For a first time Juki, if all you plan on doing is piecing and free motion quilting, the 2010 is what I recommend every time. But if you plan on doing applique and you need a zigzag stitch for making clothing and or all those other things, then I would get the F H HCLF 600. I like that one too, but I don't use it enough thanks to the fact that this does everything I need and it's straight stitch only. All right, I'm gonna cut away my excess. And then I'll press them and then we're gonna make a block. Yeah, this one's cheaper. This one's a thousand dollars. The other one's fourteen or fifteen hundred, something like that. But it's still cheaper than a lot of the other brands. All right, I'm gonna press these, and then we're gonna assemble a block, and then I'll hold the block up so that you guys can see. there and right there. All right. I'm going to sew it like this and I'm going to get a thing of a bobber so that I can hold these up to the camera for you guys. Cuz I have this little like, you know, design board thingy, my bobber. I have not used a Bernina because I never got one. All right, so right here on the outer edges are my one and a half by four and a half inch pieces, right? And then my two and a half by four and a half, they all have a snowballed corner on them to create a pinwheel. Uh, Ian does, I think. Ian has a Bernina. Yep. Okay, so now I'm just gonna chain sew these. Actually, yeah, chain sew these together. And then relay it back out and then Did you make that design board? Huh? Did you make the little design board? Yes, I made the little design board. Did you use blue? Yes, I used blue. I used Fabric Fusion by Annie's, I think it is.
And then it just has batting and um, some binding around it, which is glued also. All right, so I'm going to press these now, just pressing towards the one and a half by four and a half inch piece. That way it has less bulk. Lay it back out. You go over zippers in 2010, right? I don't go over the zippers. Use I use zippers, but I don't go over them. Yeah, you, you sew yeah. them on. Yes, I sew zippers on with a TL20. Thank you. Yes. All right, make sure that my layout is good, and it is, so I'm going to sew them together. I'm going to nest my little seam up where my points come together from my pinwheel. And then I'll do the same with this one because they're pressed in opposite directions, so they should nest right up. Oh, I, was, I should need to make a link for that because uh, like 20 comments have came through. Um, these aren't the ones that I prefer the best. The ones I prefer the best are the Clover brand, and you can find them through my affiliate link there, here, uh, Fat Quarter Shop. All right, so those two are together. I'm going to press one to the right, one to the left. And then nest the seam up and sew it together. This is adorable and very simple. All right, let's press this and make sure that I didn't lose my point and it doesn't look like I did, so. Look at that. That's a cute little block. Oops. And it's approximately eight and a half inches. So here is the block I made. So cute. Now to do that however many times I can until I have no more pieces. <laughs> I'm going to run out of the one and a half by two and a half, or the one and a half by four and a half inch pieces before I run out of the other ones, though. So I'm just going to start sewing a bunch of these now. And then I'll also make my, um, every four of these will be a block's worth. So every four sets, I should say. That way I have an equal amount. Bring the rest of these up here. Did you do a tutorial on your design board? I did not do a tutorial on my design board, but I did put it together on an open gate video a long time ago. Well, that's a tutorial, right? Yeah. It's on an open gate video. Yeah, it's on an open gate video. So that's one block's worth. One, two, three, four. So let's make a second block's worth. I definitely am going to be out of these. And a fourth. And then let's sew. 
set of four. Do I ever sketch up block and quilt ideas? Uh, sometimes I do. I need just one more. And I think <clears throat> I'm just going to cut off of one of these. A one and a half inch piece. That way I have plenty. All right, so I'll press all these and then I'll sew the pinwheel parts. Let's see how many blocks, oops. <laughs> well, that's always wonderful when I do that. I sewed three pieces together. <laughs> <clears throat> I knew I needed one piece for some reason, and I had a feeling that there was an equal amount the whole time, but no. Oh, come on, you stupid thing. Separate. Can't never uh, get this to separate fast enough for me. Have you ever considered getting a multiple sclerosis service dog? I don't need an, a dog, even if it was a service dog. I don't. I have a husband. He's my service dog. <laughs> no, I have a kitty cat. He's he's my you know helpful little not cuddler because really I don't like cuddling with animals, so it wouldn't help me at all. I had one left. Go figure. What's your top two rulers for the long arm? Top two rulers is a straight edge for the long arm and a curve. Uh, my handy gadgets, straight edge one, and then I have a curve one. All right. Move that out of my way. And we're going to press all these. Just rolling them back and then I count how many there are because I might just take some more of this um, and cut them up. That way I can make one more block probably. Oh, and I'm folding creases into stuff here. Okay. Yep. Hopefully this is going to give people ideas of what you can do with your little scraps left over from projects. It's quite fun to just sew them up into something. All right, so I have one, two, three, four. That's one block's worth. We're going to put four of these with it. 
two, three, and four. So there's one block's worth. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So here's a second block's worth. <coughs> Yeah, it's an orange, it's not red. Okay, and then one, two, three, four. It's an orange color. And then one, two, three, and four. So that means I can cut. Ooh, hey, put that there. I just realized I had blue ones too. Put that one with that one. All right, we're going to make. Some more one and a half off of here. That way, I have more variety. <clears throat> Have you ever used a ruler foot for your two feet? A TL ruler foot for my TL twenty ten Q. Yes, I have used one, and uh, I don't free motion quilt enough to need to use it. So, How often do you clean your machine? I clean my machine often, sometimes. <laughs> Make one more of these and one more of those. And then I'm just going to mix these into those piles. All right, so one and a half. One and a half. And one and a half. All right. We're just going to sew these guys together and then I'm going to mix them in with these ones. That way I have one more blocks worth. Do you think a universal oil for sewing machines is okay? I have a brother machine. Does it have oil ports? Are you supposed to oil your machine? Not all machines need to be oiled. Your brother take my oil. brother doesn't take oil. Neither does my Juki HZLF 600. You can put oil on the bobbin with each bobbin change, but you really don't have to do that either. Yeah, so check your book because you definitely don't want to put oil on a machine that does not take oil because they are self-lubricating machines. They're not made to be, especially the computerized ones. Do not put oil on your computerized machine unless otherwise stated. All right, so I'm going to pull this one there, put that one there. And then we'll pull this one here and put one here. Um, I have no idea because I'm trying to think. That one there and that one. There. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. There we go. And then one, two, three, four on that one. Four. 
one, two, three, four. Okay. I'm going to make sure now. I'm going to double count. One, two, three, four of those. One, two, three, four of those. Okay. Let's make sure. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's another block's work. <clears throat> one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Ta da! Now, that'll give me a total of six blocks. And then all the rest of this can be used towards whatever else I add. So now I just need one, two, three, four for that one. Two, three, four for this one. One, two, three, four for that one. One, two, three, four. And I have two, so I need to cut two more. So let's cut a two and a half inch strip off of here and just cut two pieces off. <laughs> oy, oy, oy. Line it up. I have videos of cleaning my machine, yes. Yeah, I have videos on taking them apart, cleaning them, and so on and so forth. I'm just going to cut off two squares off of here. Obviously, the rest will get used towards every, something else. All right, there we go. Enough blacks for that. All right, so I'm going to sew all these on here now. And then put them with their piles and so on and so forth. And I just sew all of them the same exact way, which was this way. I'm pretty sure of it. I definitely like to make things up as I go. So much fun. I'm totally trying to keep them all together. <laughs> and my thread came on. Okay. Now I can attempt to sew again. idea what to do with the rest of everything because there seems like there'd be enough pieces. Well, would you use the bonus S4 triangles for making the snowballs? Nope, I do not use the cutoffs for the snowballs because then they're smaller and they don't reach corner to corner. No, those and all these cutoffs from doing any snowballing or from binding or any of that, these I sew together into hourglasses because I'm trying to make like a million little hourglasses for my giant hourglass quilt of tiny little hourglasses. 
So I have a whole entire tray under here. I can't lift it up because it's there's too much there, but um, under my desk, and when I get a chance, I usually sew them into little hourglass blocks. I have not started trimming all the hourglass blocks as I trim everything down to two inches because they're about two and a quarter right now. Some are less, some are, some are more, but that's only because sometimes the cutoff was from like a three inch piece or something. So it wasn't exact. make just to do this quicker i'm just going to take the scissors and cut this excess away down to a quarter inch worth i mean i do it every other time with all the other pieces when i do this it's not as perfect of a cut as the you you know using the rotary cutter and the ruler but you know what? It'll work. Oops, don't cut that way, Tippy. <laughs> I almost cut it the wrong angle. That wouldn't have been good. That piece will annoy me if it stays folded like that. <laughs> It had a little crease in it from being on the fold of the fabric. Yep, so I just save all these little cutoffs because I can. Eventually, that project will get done. Oops, that's this file. Somebody put batting up on the wall and your stuff's falling off of that wire. Do you know? Um, if there's batting up on the wall and stuff is falling off, there's I don't batting. know why mine is batting and it stays. Um, I don't have a problem unless you have like polyester in it or something. I, I don't know why it wouldn't yeah mine's just 100 percent cotton no scrim batting that i use for long arm quilting usually i do have it where the top side so it's needle punched so on the back side it's a little rough i have the front side up which is the smoother side and the needle punch side on the back mine is somewhat you know getting where it really has to stick but that's only because it's covered in thread. But yeah, I just have batting on my wall and it works just fine. Eventually I will use this piece for a dark colored quilt since it's covered in threads. That's why it not does not go to waste. And then put a new piece up. I really want to get some felt, but I haven't been able to find felt, so that's what I really wanted to use. But I need a, you know, big, huge chunk of it. <clears throat> all right, let me press all these. I'm just rolling them back. File Uno. Uh, 
myself. All right, now to make the blocks. So I'm going to make a pinwheel right here in the middle. That way I know what I'm doing here. Like that, and then I'm going to lay my pieces in a nice pretty order around them like this and then sew the units together and then relay it back out <laughs> chain piece them all through but first I'm going to make sure that it's a pinwheel I'm going to lay them like this like that like this and like that sure why not so every set of four when I sew them through will go back together again Just making sure that I'm sewing them on the proper side. That way it looks nice. Sure, why not? Sure, that's there. Yay. And that's there. Perfect. <laughs> you guys love how I just talk to myself. Just... Easiest. I think it comes together nicely when you talk to your project. <laughs> Last one.
All right, so every four is a block. I'm going to keep them together again. Probably wouldn't matter if they got out of order because of the scrappiness of it. One, two, three, and four. What are the sizes of the blocks that you got? Three, four. So there are one and a half by four and a half inch strips, and then there two of those together. So one and a half by four and a half, two of them, and then a one or a two and a half by four and a half with a snowballed corner on it. Those are the cuts. So two and a half by four and a half and one and a half by two and a half. You need twice as many one and a half by four and a half inch pieces if you're going to be making this or blocks like this. I can't tell you what a whole quilt would be because I'm only making a small little scrappy project. I'm just using the scraps to create this. Very simple. And then the, the snowballed corners are two and a half inch squares. Yeah. I'm going to probably pass it to you after when I start sewing these together into blocks. We'll see. It's okay when I'm sitting down to do it. It's not bothering me. All right, and one more is worth to press. All right. So now I'm just going to stack all these. Or just make blocks, I guess, one at a time. Might as well lay these out. Ta-da! Slide that through. Slide that through. Just going to nest my seam on my pinwheel. Another one. Four. Perfect. Nest these together. How many of you out there actually? Take your scraps after each project and sew them into something. Or do you pass your scraps on to someone else? Oh, oh I can't do that, I guess. Oh, well. Let's just put it together. It don't matter. It's just a scrappy little project. Well, technically, it's uniform scrappy because... It's just the leftovers from a single project, so this would be called a uniform scrappy project because they all go together. I see people say try to sew their scraps, they put them in a bag, they sew them or use them in embroidery appliques. Oh, that's cool. 
I have never done the in hoop project, so with applique on the embroidery machine. I don't have a very big hoop on my embroidery machine to do that kind of stuff. I mean, I know I can do little projects, though. I just haven't tried it yet. I know you love to sew scraps, Jim. You're like me. So all the scrappy projects. Right, that's what I saw. I have the chat still open. All right, now every two belong together. All right, so I'm just going to finger press for now. Opposite directions. I'm going to nest my seam. I didn't fall very far, it fell in my lap. <laughs> That's that center seam. Attempt to keep the points of my pinwheel, but if I lose them, I don't care. <laughs> it looks nicer when you don't lose it, but I mean, who's really paying attention to the points? It's not a show quilt. It's just a probably a wall hanging is what's going to come out of this because it's not very big. Just be a cute little wall hanging or tabletop or whatever. And for those that are curious, I do not press seams open usually at pinwheels unless, uh, like, I'm really trying to have a super flat, flat block. Um, so there is a little bit of bulk in the middle of every single block that has a pinwheel in it, you know. And a lot of people say that you should press the seams open, but I don't care about that. And if I long arm quilt over it, I have a spoon foot for my long arm, so I can go over lumps and bumps. All right. All of my blocks are now made. Let's press them and then put them up on the wall and then figure out what to do with the leftover pieces. How's your long arm behaving? My long arm is working perfectly fine again. <laughs> Why? Because there's not a client quilt on the frame. <laughs> 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 We're going to see as soon as I load another client quilt, if it misbehaves, that's definitely a sign because it's done it now the last like five quilts. The tension has gotten off, but on client quilts, not on my own. <laughs> so it's probably trying to tell me I need to take a break because I do take in a lot of work. More than one woman should handle, especially with my medical problems and always having bad leg days. Oh my gosh, let me tell you, <laughs> it's been horrible lately. <laughs> I try to make it work, but you know, I do have to have an income, so, and YouTube isn't it. <laughs> I definitely need to keep long arm quilting. It just sucks that my machine is trying to tell me otherwise. <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of funny. Oh, sorry. I just ended up doing it. All right. Let's see what we can do here by just sitting here because I don't want to get up. So let's do one right here, right here. Hold on, let's grab the rest of these. We're going to do one, two, three, like this. And then three. Oh, let's separate them just a little bit more because I have an idea. 
and I want the idea to work. Put that there. That's perfectly right there. And this one right here. And then we're going to take these fellers. And we're going to stick them in between. There's probably not enough. We're going to see, though. Um, momentarily, yes. Yes, <laughs> I'm, I trust me, I know. <laughs> Okay, I gotta lower these some because or else my little pieces won't stick to the wall. Right there. Right there. Okay. There. Let's hope that there's enough pieces here. Because I really like this idea. Oi, oi, oi. There's not enough. And there is enough. Now I need two more two and a half inch squares from this fabric. Why? Because I can. Watch this. We're going to have so much fun with this. And I think I'm going to make it even better. Right there and right there. Okay. And then we don't even have to use this. We're not going to use this one. This tone on tone. We're just going to use what's here. So I'm going to put this together like that. And then we're going to use these one and a half inch strips. And this I'm going to cut into one and a half inch strips. Will this go all the way around with one and a half inch strips? I could do one inch all the way around. Thinking, thinking out loud. We're going to see right now. Let's see what we can do. All right, let's move that. And let's pull these down and sew these little sections. Oh, these should be, yeah, they are. I'm talking to myself. Sorry, guys, I just had a brain fart. I'm like, these need to be four and a half inches, but they are not. And no, they are because I pre-cut them all to four and a half inches. Duh. Wow, that was a tippy moment. We're going to put all these little sections together. Okay, I'm just going to take that off the chair because I am sweating so bad right now. It's 99 degrees outside, so it's uh, when you're working in here and the sun is beating down on the house, even with the AC on, it, it still gets a little sweaty in here with that iron on. And this one. And then I'll press these, which you need to turn the iron back on for. <laughs> huh? I'll just finger press. Finger press is just as good. All right. I can plug it back in. Do you no. need iron? No, it's fine. I'll just finger press them. All right. So I'm going to finger press all these, and then we're going to put them between the blocks, and then make the sashing -y thing, and then with those cornerstones. All right, so put that there, there. Doesn't really matter where I'm putting them. I'm just trying to make that sure that no color matches on those tops and bottoms. You know that it's not the same two colors next to each other. And so far, it's not. So although this. Many blues in one section right there. Let's put this one 
over here. There we go. All right, so I'm going to sew this one to this. Nest that center seam. I'm just going to finger press towards the sashing. Put the next one on there. And it doesn't really matter, but I do want to make sure that those seams nest nicely so that it lays flat. Press it towards the sashing that we have created with the leftover squares. Put the next one on. Grab the last. Definitely love, like, love, love having the design board right behind me so that I can reach and sew instead of having to, I mean, we should get up and stand up and move around, but um, when you're, like, trying to keep your blocks in order and stuff, it's nice to have it directly right here and just spin around and look, and if you need to take a further look to make sure everything looks good, step back. I definitely like having it all behind me. I think it's been making things a little bit easier. Saves on my leg troubles. Oh, this goes towards the piece. that right here and sew these ones together and I'm going to stand for a bit because I'm really sweating to my chair. So one thing about that vinyl chair or leather chairs when you live in a hot place I don't think it helps me. <laughs> but I need, do need a foot pedal to be in a standable position. Okay, next one. In a minute. We're going to wait a minute because I'm just finger pressing for now. The whole project will be ready in a few short minutes. I like that I pretty much had almost an exact amount of peach peaches. Pe pieces. <laughs> peaches. Peaches for me. Millions of peaches. Peaches for free. Does anybody know that song? If anybody is from like the nineties alternative with Primus. All right, now to put the rows together. So I have top, middle, and bottom. I'm gonna put the middle onto the bottom real quickly. I'm gonna nest all these seams, even though they're gonna be, because I didn't know which way to finger press them. So I'm gonna purposely press them now. Do one way. Do fingers get tired from pressing? Um, I rotate and I use my fingernail not finger pad. If I used my finger pad, my uh, MS would flare up really bad with nerve pain in my fingers. It already has issues with um, 
nerve pain from playing with fabric. Fabric is rough on my skin on its own. If you ask Scott, I sit and scratch myself constantly when clothes are on because fabric just annoys my skin. And it's just because of the nerves. Very extra sensitive, you know. So when I finger press, I use my nail. And I rotate so that I don't ruin my nails too bad. I rotate between my first and second finger. Sometimes I use my thumb. It depends on the position I'm in. But I use the nail, not the finger itself. I keep that completely off the fabric. All right, just because I need to know, it goes like this. All right, so we're gonna take this one, put it down on there. Now, so this one. You can turn the iron back on now, that way it's ready when you're done with this. I'll get it because I'm in, okay. in that mood. All right, so once this is on here, then we're going to take and I'm going to cut one and a half. Let's see how big this is. Let's see if I can get one and a half from that yellow. If not, we'll just use one and a half from the already cut one and a half. Okay. Oh, this is so cute. My what? Oh, my pressing tool. I have a pressing tool. You can get it um, from T at T Quilts. Um, I just rarely use it. <laughs> I'm so bad about that kind of stuff. I have it for when I really need it for things, but. All right. Ta-da! So my little busy table runner or wall hanging or whatever it is just needs to be bordered and I don't think there's going to be enough. Let's see how big this thing is. We're going to see right now. There might be 29. Well, you know what? There might just be enough. For two one and a half inch strips of this yellow and then we'll use this on the second round. I'm going to see right now. You're going to use that again? Yeah. So I'm going to very cautiously cut two one and a half inch strips off of this. What did I say that was? 29. Oops. Twenty-eight and a half. Ooh, how much is here? I got four inches here. How much is here? Oh, we'll do it from that. We'll do it from that. I could do two inch. Oh, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, I'm gonna go around it with this first, and no, I can't because then they'll still be not enough at two inches. Okay, we're gonna do one and a half. See, I have to think about that, you know, because you're adding a little bit more. And then how much was that one? Yeah, that's not going to be enough. 38, 17. Yeah, there won't be enough for with the fabric. All right. 
Let's just do the original one and a half plan. And honestly, I kind of think I should just put the yellow second and the orange first. What do you guys think? We're going to lay the orange on here so you guys can see. Orange first or yellow. Orange then yellow or yellow then orange. I have way more orange, so that's why I thought yellow first. Because I have way more of the orange fabric. Well, you put it in the way, so yep. Hold on, I'm putting a yellow on the bottom first. And then... Orange, orange second. Yeah. Orange. Yeah, I think so, because the yellow I only have, I don't even think there's enough to go. Well, they're all saying do the yellow first, if you want it, right? Yeah. I literally only That's have... they've all said to. to. me, it looks the same either way. I can't. I only have enough to literally go right here. Let's move this orange out of the way. It's probably not going to be enough. 28 and a half. And then this would have to go down here. Yeah, there's not even enough to go down the side, so I can't do that. I can't use the yellow. It's going to have to be orange only. What about these pieces you have right here? That's a one-inch piece. It's not enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, we're going to just take the yellow out of the equation completely, and we can do just the uh, orange only. Unfortunately, I knew there wasn't going to be enough. I did, you know, it's small enough, but... And I don't have any what more of this fabric. There's still not going to be enough. Oh, okay. Well, that's okay. Yeah, no, it's still not going to be enough. I have plenty of this, though. Like, way plenty. I also have... Um, ooh, I could take this and cut eight and a half inch segments and then throw this in and then this around second to make it look big. I just gave myself an idea, but that's not going to work either. Because I can only get four eight and a half inch segments. Yep, that's not going to work either. Nope, we're just going to go around it with this one. All right, let's do this. And then call it done. All right. Am I literally just going to cut it to size after sewing it on? <laughs> I don't pull or tug when I do this. I just let the fabric take its way in. Yeah, because I had four of these one and a half inch strips left. Plus, I had that whole next uh, that I could get more from. That sucks. Oh, well. All right. Let's put one on this side real quick. And then we'll do the two sides. I'm going to press these back and then do the sides. And then my little quilt we made and I still have scraps. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. But that's okay. At least I have used up the most of the scraps. The rest can get cut up for my bins. 
All right, I'm going to go ahead and trim this to size because I didn't cut the selvage off to start with. I just left it right there. Let's see how many inches this is. It is 20 and a half. So let's take two. 20 and a half inch pieces. See, I wouldn't have been able to do that with the other ones because it's 20 and a half inches. I'm just going to cut the selvage off, line this up, and cut 20 and a half inch. I'm going to line it up on the line. Cut 20 and a half. Right there. And then attach the perfectly cut sides to the sides. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. Perfect. What do you do to lessen neck fatigue? Neck fatigue to lessen it. Um, stop stretch working out helps doing lots of exercises what and my husband rubs my neck and shoulders often because i ask him to because i i literally have really bad tension problems it's part of having ms with the spasticity of things and so quilting even though i ignore my pain throughout 90 percent of what i'm doing i end up in more pain when I'm done. So by the time I rest, I literally need my neck, my back, you know, sometimes my legs all rubbed because whew, the pain. All right, my little project is now complete. Look at that, yay. All from scraps. So now I just need to quilt the little thing up when I get a chance because I don't want it right now. <laughs> Can you see it in the whole screen right here? Yeah. Isn't that adorable? I love it. I love it. My desk doesn't need a video. It is a actual office desk that is 72 60. by 36 and weighs 500 bazillion pounds. And it takes, you have to take it apart to even move it because it's an enormous desk. It's like 20 something inches high. Yeah. It's a nice desk. I love it. It's very sturdy and it, you know, it's great for sewing machine and cutting all like next to me. So I just roll from one side to the other. There is a the drawers, the office drawers on the one side. I don't have to have that there, but I like it there because I keep tools in it. But my goal with a desk and we searched and searched and searched for the longest time for a desk. I don't want the drawers on the right side because I use a knee lift. That's what this is. I use my knee lift. And if there was jaws on that side, you wouldn't be able to use the knee lift because you're hitting the jaws. So I needed a desk that had the jaws on the left side of the desk. And do you know how impossible it is to find a dresser or a dresser, a desk with jaws on the left? Literally no desk ever except for this kind. It has to be an office desk. So I got an office desk and it was free. So I'm not going to complain. They had to go pick it up, which it took a few guys to pick it up. It took four of us to set it up when I finally moved rooms. We had to disassemble it to take it out of here to get the new carpet, just to reassemble it in here. Four people. It took four guys. Well, I was the fourth. I'm not a guy. So, but it took four people to get it in here and put it together. It's, it's a lot. It's big. It's like the wood is an inch and a quarter thick. That's how thick it is. It's heavy duty. <laughs> so, it's an amazing desk, though. I wouldn't have any other desk.
because I even have a little one in my other room. It's sturdy. The embroidery machine's on it, but guess where the, the drawers are? Or the little area. It's all on the right. So it would never be a sewing desk either because I wouldn't be able to use a knee lift. All righty. Look at that. My cute little project is all done. And we had fun. So I, I'm going to repeat this real quick. One and a half by four and a half per block, you need eight of them. Sew them together into units of two. That creates a two and a half by four and a half inch segment. Then you need four two and a half by four and a half inch pieces snowballed on one corner to create your pinwheel and then sew them together into the units so you get the little dash and your pinwheel all in one block. Very simple. Use your scraps and then in between I just use the rest of the scraps which are two and a half by four and a half so it gives that separation and then you just see these blocks just floating there. I like it. I like it a lot and I literally have now my little triangles which I'm going to throw under here that go in this thing right here. Like I said, it's a disaster, but here's where I keep all the triangles. And then I have a one and a half inch salvage to salvage strip for my stash pile, a two and a half that I'm going to cut down. I don't know how big this piece is. Some leftover one and a half inch strips that I'll put in my strings bin. Some more one and a half strings and then I will cut these pieces down that are one inch right here that I cut off those ends when I cut the extra two and a half or one and a half inch pieces. I'll cut these into one inch squares and put them in my square bin. And then some miscellaneous scraps that I didn't even need to use that I need to cut down. So literally I barely and I had one strip left. So I barely have anything left finally. Just need to cut this down after the live. <laughs> that way I know and then put the other pieces away. And then, poof, it'll all be cleaned up. And I got a cute little quilt out of last week's video's scraps. Look at that. All right. I'm just going to go grab them. Oh, no, I, I don't want to walk the camera. Why? I don't. No, I'll get them. I'm going to go grab you guys' this little buddy. You want to go see your friends? Huh? Is it time to go see your friends? All right. Just know that I trimmed my kitty. Say hi, everybody. Say, I'm a little lion now. Say, I'm super soft. And he's super hyper and playful And now. super hyper and playful, huh? Yes, he's a hyper kitty now, huh? You my little lion kitty? Say hi, everybody. Wave. Hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> yep. And if you're new to my channel, every year my cat has to be shaved because it gets too hot. And he gets very lethargic and lays on the tile all the time because he wants to cool down. But as soon as we shave him, he'll go back and lay in his normal spots again because he doesn't have all that hair. He's way too furry to be a furry cat here in the summertime. I mean, it's 99 degrees outside today. We keep our AC at 80. And yeah, he, he doesn't like it. He wants it all shaved off. So, And he lays nicely for me to get shaved. And, huh. he gets a bath and he gets afterwards. a bath afterwards. And he gets a bath afterwards, so he smells good, huh? Yeah, say hi, everybody. Oh, you like that. And lately, I started shaving under his chin. So he has a little Fu Manchu going on right here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do right, buddy. Yes. So he's get a, he gets a lion cut. So this is the other thing I know how to do is animals. I can groom animals. Cats. Huh, yes, yes, you get all groomed up, huh? All right, you said hi to everybody. There you go. Whew. They still want to see him in the bean bag. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he likes to lay in the bean bag. <laughs> He's so heavy. I only got like a pound off of him from sh shaving all the hair. We forgot to weigh him before and after. We keep saying we're going to do it. 
every time I shave him. We used to. And then we weigh him. And in the past, he lost a pound, like a pound and a quarter off of being shaved. But this time I forgot to weigh him before and after his shave. What kind of cat is he? He is uh, most likely mitted ragdoll, but he also has some snowshoe in him. According to traits and looks wise, his face has it, but he yes, also looks like a mitted. He's one or the other or both, a mitted ragdoll with snowshoe, or he's a snowshoe with mitted ragdoll in him. But yeah, he definitely has the mitted ragdoll look. So anyway, well, I got off here early today because I finished my project. So I'm going to go and kick my feet up because <sighs> it's been a long day. So if you guys didn't get a chance to, uh, if you guys want to go watch replays, I was on Off Kilter Crafter Ian's channel earlier. And then on Friday night, I was on Becca's. If you guys want to see the continuum quilt from start to finish, go start on Becca's channel and watch her replay from Friday night. And then today's uh, Ian's Sunday live stream of the continuum quilt. And you guys can see that evolve. Uh, other than that, I'm done. I'm going to go. Anything? No? No questions? All right, guys. So have a great night. Thank you for hanging out. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new. And I will see you in my next video. Bye, everybody. Bye. See ya. <laughs>